Hello, good afternoon, welcome to Communities Live here on Sheffield Live 93.2 FM. Chris and Ellie here, and we have a very special guest here today. We have film director Joe Southwell. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Thank you for having me. Thank you for joining me. So, for our listeners at home, um, give us a bit of background. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Oh, gosh, where do I start? Um, So, always been a filmmaker, I think, ever since I was pretty much about three years of age, Um, always running around, living in my imagination, was convinced I was a Jedi Knight. Um, And that was my destiny, basically, to to have a a lightsaber and, you know, stop Darth Vader and all the rest of it. Um, So that was kind of like my childhood, uh, very, very much so. Um, And I still have that very strong feeling, like a lot of filmmakers, you know, one of the first times I went to the cinema, sort of sitting in this sort of dark room, popcorn, watching a movie and just being completely sort of transformed and wanting to live in the world that I saw on the screen and just thinking it was absolutely magic and wanting to be part of that. And that really hasn't changed. I'm still the same now. I still am a Jedi and um, I basically want to live in the work films or you know, as I don't do any acting anymore, I used to do a lot of acting, but I'm very much want to create worlds for the screen. I love visual storytelling and yeah, I yeah, I just love it. I mean, let's talk about about influence. I mean, you mentioned mm-hmm. like Jedi, so I mean so <laughs> many are massive Star Wars fan. But outside of Star Wars, what is your other influences? Um, so I love mythology in general, actually. So the idea of a story um you know built by something slightly fantastical i i definitely do love that that i've had um so my some of my family are irish so i've had very strong influences from there so even some of the irish mythology has, has influenced some of my films um i love i also love technology actually that's something i've kind of i've always loved technology but i've at the moment i seem to be coming to this sort of fusion between my love of filmmaking and technology so I'm very much developing a story that involves VR working more with VFX so taking yeah that side of things um, and bringing it into my own normal narrative work Um, yeah at the end of the day I think I love a good story and and so genre can be anything sometimes it's an animation it could be a love story or it could be something but if it's a really really good story at the heart of it that will always grab me and I mean, as a filmmaker yourself, I mean, if there was anybody that you could work with new or old in the near future, who would it be and why? That's a big question. That's a really big question. Um, who would I want to work with and why? Oh, I don't know who I'm going to say actually. Um well, I definitely want to. This is this. I definitely want to work with my producer Sarah again, but on a feature film. So she produced um, Echo with me, and I absolutely loved working with her, and I loved the environment that was created and the type of set that we had. So I would absolutely love to work with her again. Um, and there are other people that I've worked with as well before that I would definitely like to work with again. But if it was someone new, um, oh gosh, I have a I, yeah. You've really caught me there. That's, that's a tricky one. Sometimes there are cast, I guess, actors um, that we would all maybe, you know, Zendaya or someone like that would be amazing to work with in a feature and I think would resonate with some of my stories. Um, yeah, so we'll stick with her. Stick with her. So you mentioned a film called Echo. Um, so tell us a little bit more about that. Can you give us a bit about the plot, but don't give too much away? Oh, okay. Um, so Alice is our lead, and the story is it's an imagined memory for Alice. She's a mother who's lost something, and Echo is the story of what she's trying to find. Right. Okay, so well, that's short and sweet. And uh, yeah, is that okay, we'll I was it, trying not to give, <laughs> say it too much. <laughs> so we'll keep it. We'll keep it real. And uh, but um, in. During making of Echo, I mean, was it quite a long process or was it? did it come together quite quickly? So actually the pre-production was a long process. Um, the original story, I wrote it like many years ago 
as a short story, as a narrative. Mm. Um, and I've been playing with that idea. Could it be a book? Could it be a longer story? Yeah. I was looking at it in all sorts of different ways. And like you do as filmmakers, there was various film funds that were coming up and I was looking at different ones and I felt that the story of Echo as a film would fit different, you know, different things that were out there and available. And I tried pulling it apart and playing with it and trying to almost change the story to fit a funding module. Mm. And then I went, no, this is wrong. It doesn't, I'm, I'm damaging the story. So I went back to a more of an original version, which is, is, is what we have now. And I had met Sara through Creative um, uh, UK female founders, and we just got on very well. And we wanted to do some bigger projects together, but we thought we'd start with a smaller project and see how we got on. So I sent her Echo and thankfully she fell in love with it and just said, yeah, this is my kind of film. I really want to try and make this. So because there's... Um, it, it obviously lends itself well to the fantasy genre. There is extensive VFX. There is underwater cinematography. All of that takes a lot of planning and also, you know, had to raise certain amounts of finance to actually help us make the film. So that took a big chunk of just under a year to do. The actual filming of it was very, very short. We had we only had two days down on the beach and then we had two tank, two days in the in the water tank. Right. So the filming was the shortest part. I would have, in, a, in you know, in your ideal scenario, I probably would have liked one more day on the beach, but it just wasn't to be. And then post-production, so editing and creating the VFX, that took from, so the October through to December. Um, so that took several months. And that was quite a backwards and forwards sort of situation between having to cut it without having the VFX, then trying to see what it would look like and did that work uh, without, before the VFX could be developed completely, mm -hmm. because once it's in, it's, you know, so much work that sure. goes into that. Um, yeah, so all in all, once the story hit the producer's hands, I'd say we're probably looking about 12 months. And I've got to ask, I mean, uh, we've come out of COVID now and uh, COVID was a bad time for everyone. Mm -hmm. I mean, filmmakers, everybody alike. I mean, how do you feel like, do you feel like the industry, the film industry has changed because of the COVID, uh, COVID pandemic? Do I think, I think, I think the positive thing about COVID was that as creatives, you had to find a way to get through that time. Some people went on and made Zoom videos or Zoom films yeah. I did a lot of writing and developing. Um, so there were, you know, from those points of views as creatives, I think you always kind of find a way through. Uh, I also do, um, I'm also a TV director, so I'm not just an independent filmmaker, I'm a TV director. Wow. So COVID was a very strange time. Some of the first things of I was directing on set for TV were during COVID, and that was really strange having a mask having to be two meters away from not only my cast but also my crew and you know for all those people who've been on film sets the, as a director I'm like I was chatting to people need to go and see what it looks like you know and it, it's a very personable situation and that was all stripped away yeah. and over the next sort of nine months I think getting back onto set with graduating degrees people being aware of protecting each other's safety and trying to respect each other and everybody feeling differently about the whole pandemic. It took time. Um, the sets I've since worked on are all, I think, better places for it in a way, because if anybody does have a slight worry about anything, they feel that they're now in a position to be able to voice that, which I think is great. Um, but Obviously, we've had strikes, the strikes that have been happening, um, mm. the SAG strikes and everything, and that's had a massive effect on us over here in the UK, I think more so than maybe people realise. So filmmakers have had the pandemic to survive, and now they've had this to survive as well, which has actually stopped a lot of work for a lot of people. So, um, yeah. It's a I mean, I want to actually ask about that. I mean, I don't I, I don't want it to be too controversial. So I hope mm -hmm. it's not going to be a controversial question. I mean, what what are your thoughts and feelings about using AI? Uh, I don't find that controversial for me personally. I, like I said to you, I, I, um, I like technology. I like the use of technology. 
but I think it needs to be used responsibly because I don't think it should replace humanity. And I think the um, if AI, any form of AI tool, if that's implemented and it replaces a person and that therefore their job, I think that's obviously detrimental to our whole creative industry. Um, if it's used as a tool, like lots of tools, you know, no different from, I don't know, Canva to PowerPoint to help you create a pitch deck. There are AI tools out there that help you do those sorts of things. Then I, I, I don't, I don't mind that, but I would never want it to be used to replace a person who is a creative because sure. that'd be awful. <laughs> well, thank you for that. Thank you for that answer, Joe. Uh, I mean, for our listeners at home who uh, want to break in this industry, Mm -hmm. uh, how difficult is it? And also, what advice will you give for those who want to break into this kind of industry? Um, so, yeah, I think if you want to get into the creative industry, so if you want to get set in film and you're not kind of sure what area, but you know you love films, you love watching films and you'd like to make films, I think there are kind of different ways of going about it. Some people choose to kind of go to uni and study it that way. And that's great. Um, and then other people um, just go out and start making their own stuff on their phones or, or whatever the devices they've got. And again, that's brilliant. Uh, but what I would always say is that you need to try and find ways to actually get on a real set and start seeing and learning all about all the different jobs, the hundreds of people it takes to actually make anything. Um, I started off as a runner, you know, driving cast around, dropping them off, picking them up, getting them cups of tea, all that sort of thing. And I don't think any of those things have made me, uh, you know, they they all stood me, all stood me the test of time, as it were. That you know, they will help me um, get to where I am now. So I think as much experience across the board of everything to help you decide what it is you actually really want to do. And then you can start following that path. And uh, you've also been nominated for a short film award. So mm -hmm. tell us a bit more about that. So, Yeah, well, this is, um, so at the moment, my short film Echo is obviously out at the festival circuit. So we've, uh, we've recently won a number of awards um, at various film festivals. Um, it was screened with the British Urban Film Festival, which this year was done um, up in Yorkshire, which was amazing. So it was screened up there and we won an award there. And we've won a couple of awards at some London-based film festivals. And yeah, it's really exciting. I think what's lovely is that we're winning awards and being nominated for like Best Fantasy or Best UK Short, which is, for me, utterly amazing because it means people really enjoy my work and they understand the film. But what's also nice is that some of the awards, like for the one, there's one coming up for this evening, which is um, for best editor. And then we've had a best cinematographer. So it seems that, and best sound uh, soundtrack as well. We won best soundtrack recently. So I think it, it's like people are recognizing different skill sets that, are, that have all been involved in the making of this film. And I think that's brilliant for all the creatives involved. And I want to say, I wish you the best of luck for tonight as well. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Uh, and uh, for, I mean, um, any is there any future projects that you're currently working on outside of Echo? I mean... Yeah, no, there is. Yeah, no, definitely. Um, there's one that I can tell you about, which is called Running Out. And it's a feature film. And it's about a woman who is quite isolated. It's set in a sort of dystopian future. And she's looking for her perfect relationship or her perfect partner but in the VR world and she's becoming obsessed with using VR to try and find her future partner. And all the time that she's spending in the VR world, she's actually being stalked by a deadly predator in real time. Interesting. Yeah. I cannot wait to see that. Yeah. So, nice um, thriller. So, I mean, and uh, I mean, for our listeners at home who want to see Echo, Mm -hmm. um, how can people get a copy of it? Is it on digital platforms or is it on DVD? Um, so it's not going to be distributed um, until we've finished our festivals. So we've got a few more festivals to go, but in early 2024, we'll hope to have a distributor and then it'll be available, you know, Amazon, Google Play, all the, all the usual kind of outlets. 
Um, the other way, I guess, is whenever the next festival is announced, try and get to a festival, which is always great because you actually get it to see in the cinema, and that's always good. And uh, for our listeners at home who want to uh, follow you on social media, mm-hmm. you have like Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. I've got it all, Chris, all of it, absolutely all. I'm on Facebook, I'm on Instagram, is probably one of my best go to ones that I've used. I've started using threads as well, see how that goes. Um, I even set up a TikTok page, not that I'm really, you know, a TikTok-y type person, but I've set up a TikTok. But yeah, Instagram is is my best. And it's just Joe underscore Southwell one. And my final question for you, Joe, is, is there anything that you would like to say to our listeners who are listening right now? Yes, I'd just like to say thank you for listening. Uh, keep watching loads of films, keep our industry alive and um, watch as many as you can. So it helps all the indie filmmakers out there. Joe, it's been a pleasure, and uh, thank you, very much, thank you very much for your time, and I wish you the best of luck for tonight. Oh, thank you so much. Fingers crossed. <laughs>